Yeah. Welcome to famous carnist, famous, <laughs> famous cartoonist says things in the morning. Happy Monday morning to you. This is an actually morning show that I am doing in the morning today. Art Caney's here. What's up, Mr. Art Caney? The dashing doodler. I'm here to celebrate coffee. Today is a special day because I am showing you what's underneath the hat. Today I'm showing you my hair. I'm showing you my curly locks, my beautiful mane, my mane, my hair that keeps my wife happy, that keeps my wife home because she knows that this man exists in the house. It's true. It's a special day. I told you that I would show you my curly hair. And we're trying to get it bigger. It's quarantine style. No haircut since March. It used to be a buzz cut in March. This week for the haircut. And I wore a thing pin for you guys. See the thing? I wore the thing for you guys. Just recently, I straightened out my basement with my girl. We organized, we put things away, put stuff on easels, hung stuff up, and we found a bunch of these marble pins, which are kind of cool. I hope you enjoy the hair. It's not that often that I show my hair, but it's soft, it's clean. I think it looks beautiful this fine morning. Normally I'm coming off an all-nighter about this time. And I'm going to bed usually around this time. But I've been awake since about 3. And I've been working on pages since about 3.30. <laughs> so I've been working on stuff already, man, for about 6 hours. It's just what I got to do. I hope you guys are digging your day, digging life itself. Comments are got away from me. Let me see what you guys are saying. Art Caney's here. Did I just see Patty Lady? Yeah, there she is. Patty Lady. We shared one moment together. Patty Lady and, and I, or would I say me? And, I normally would say me and Patty Lady. I know properly it's Patty Lady and I. We met in, I think it was Atlanta, Dragon Con maybe. It's the only time I've ever been there. And I met her, she's a cartoonist, and had a good time. I thought she was really cool. And somehow I only met her for a few moments, but I feel like she's my friend for life. How is that? You make a connection, right? I think she lives in a mountainous area. Denver maybe? Colorado somewhere? But it's good to see her. Good to see you, Patty Leedy. And Art Caney's here. The dashing doodler. Sergio's here. Hello, Sergio. You're admiring the Wolverine and Spider-Man. I painted that on Saturday. I do live painting shows on Saturday. And I just painted that one just a few days ago. And I'm delivering it tonight. Me and um, Wasan Johnny are going to meet up. And I'm going to give him his paint. He's a local, he lives locally to me. It's only about less than a half an hour away. So we're gonna we're gonna meet up, maybe clean classes and then be on our way. 
Sweet for Johnny Watson. Sweet for Spider Man. Muski's here. Good morning, Muski. She's a new mommy, everybody. We're about a year now. Cute little baby girl. She's awesome. Muski digs the curls. Thank you. Yeah, they're real soft. It gets to a point where I don't need a pillow. I can just lay down anywhere. My head is surrounded by cushion. <laughs> Sergio wants to know, will there be a sequel to the Superman of Smallville? I hope so. I have enough stories for at least four volumes of Superman of Smallville. Hopefully they let give me a shot and let me do it. And um, I'm almost finished with Archimaniacs. I'll be finished with it this week. I have to finish sketching it today. I'm working on uh, Super Pets. I got it on my screen right here. You can hear it. Hear the screen? I'm working on that Supergirl and Comet, the Super Horse. I'm working on that today. I sent them about six pages thus far this morning. And I'll finish the rest today, tomorrow. But I'll work on Archimaniacs will be done this week. So what I'm saying is, after I finish Archimaniacs, maybe then I'll get more uh, Superman books. Maybe. I'm not sure yet. But I'll get more of something. Because um, we like each other. DC Comics likes me and I like them. So we'll do more things together. But I, I, I'm, I'm a busy guy lately. I'm doing a lot of books. And once I finish these few, I'll be down to... Um, Six, I got six super pet books, and then I got Drew and Jot number two. I finished Gilbert number three, which is awesome. It's gonna come out on November 24th. And I finished, uh, I'll be done with Archimaniacs, and that I think comes out in December. And Drew and Jot number two, I'll be able to go full force into that, and that'll come out. I think that one comes out in December also. And then Drew and Jot number three will be a year after, and then. My alien book, Big Alien Moon Crush. That one's coming out in 2021. Got pushed back, pushed back, but only 30 pages from finishing that one. So everything is everything is falling into place, and I just keep going. I just keep making things. And on the weekends, I like to paint, which is really cool. As you can see, there's a Batman on this one. See Batman? This one belongs to uh, to my good friend Danny. I gotta mail them to him or keep them when I see him. I'm gonna hand them to him. Swig for Batman and Wolverine. This is good. My coffee's a perfect temperature right now. I've been drinking coffee all day. And this is the last of the pot of coffee. My wife was up working early. I put a pot of coffee with her. But she set she set the alarm, but she woke up before the alarm, so she came downstairs. That's why I've been up since three. The alarm went off at three o'clock, and I was dreaming, and I was pressing all the buttons on my alarm clock, but nothing was happening. But I realized it's her alarm clock. <laughs> so that's why I just got up. I pressed the alarm. I tried to go to sleep, but it didn't work. I couldn't catch it. Started thinking about super horses. Super girls, so I keep down. That's it. We're working, man. And that's it. Now we're here. And I was like, I gotta go talk to my people on my Facebook channel. I gotta talk to Muski and Danny Lemer. Oh yeah, Danny Lemer. And Sergio. What else is Sergio saying? What advice would I give to a young cartoonist? The advice I always give to young cartoonists, any cartoonist, anyone who wants to break in, make their own comic is you just have to write and draw. I carry a sketchbook around with me and I draw in it as much as possible. I write down all my ideas, I do all my sketches, I draw every little doodle I save it. For example, this just this weekend, last weekend, so week, so nine days ago or something like that, I was cleaning up, straightening up, organizing, and I found this cool drawing of Gero Man's villain. Check him out. He's Gero Man. It's the shape of Gero Man, but upside down. So he's the upside down Gero Man. This guy, I'm going to call him Kronos. Because in Chicago, 
the company that makes the gyros is named Chrono, so he's evil. Arr, and he's on fire. So I forgot I made this guy. I forgot I created this guy. And I'm I'm working on a whole bunch of number ones that are going to be released on Comixolo Comixology Digital. So I got a whole bunch of books that are in progress that are being drawn, penciled, and including uh, Hero Man and Cosmic Action Cat and Abraham Linkage and Amazing Mouse. All these books that I want to put out, but they're all in, in Webster of Spider Monkeys in there. I got another Grimace book. I got another Grim Reaper book, but they're all in progress in various stages, but nothing's done yet. So when I get some time after I finish some more of these uh, bulk of deadlines, um, I'm going to start releasing those. So Gyro Man is going to be one of the first ones. And that guy Kronos, Kronos is going to be in one of, the, one of the villains. So Gyro Man fights a lot of parodies of fast food guys. Like he fights Reggie McDougal and he fights uh, not Wendy, Wanda and her dad. <laughs> but it's a spoof up of Wendy. It's pretty cool. So I got a lot of cool stuff. He fights uh, the king of burgers, not the Burger King. I might make up something else. I don't know what I'm gonna call him yet. Hamburger, the Hamburger Emperor or something like that. But they're not too. They're not really uh, like total parodies. They're actually cool characters. I got a guy like based off a of White Castle called the Rook and the Crook. It's gonna be cool. Sweet for Gyro Man. Gyro Man is coming back. Coming back to. A digital comic shop near you. Digital is cool for me because it allows me to put put things out there to publish books and not have to spend money on printing. So, but I'm, I'm trying to figure that out too. I want to make some printed books, but I don't have a lot of money to print because it costs a lot of money to print a book. So, I might do a series of paintings that are going to go towards printing a book. We'll see. So I'm going to be putting stuff on and my extra paintings. I'm going to put them on eBay. I have an eBay account called RDB Collectibles because me, RDB. It's true. And I also have, I want to show you something. But first I want to see what you guys are saying. Yeah, for the cartoonists, always carry a sketchbook. Carry it around, draw every day. Sergio says, yay, Gilbert. Oh, Sergio says, your name is Sebastian. I'm using my dad's account. Oh, you're... Oh, that's cool. That's allowed. And Pervergio. Yeah, Chris Brown. That's a good name. Yeah, I'll have something like that. Emperor Burgo. I kind of like the Emperor. M. M. Bergeron. I'll come up with something there. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Look what I got. I got something that's kind of cool. I got this mask. <laughs> I got this mask from Threadless. And this is my company, Electric Milk. It's got my logo on it. These are real cool. And the cool thing about this mask is, it's fog, besides fogging up my glasses, is it's real soft. But it, now that I have it, I want to go outside more. <laughs> I want to go shop. I want to go to Target, Walmart, and see what people are doing. Just to stand there and look at them. And I got like a box of rubber gloves in the car. So I'll put this on and I, I wear purple gloves like the original Batman. And I'll go and just look at people. That's cool. I like it. Fits good. It's nice and snug. <laughs> it matches my hair. And it looks like Spider Man when I talk. Like normal. Remember Spider Man's mouth would move on the cartoon? His chin would move. Like that. It would just move and you. You could be saying anything and it will move the same. It's kind of cool, right? Here's my sales pitch. <laughs> if you want these guys, I got I got a link in my description. And uh, you can buy shirts and stuff and masks and I got I got all kinds of cool stuff. Phone cases. You go to Threadless. It's called artbaltazar.threadless.com. Famous cartoonist stuff. And I'm, I'm working on more designs, too. I'm going to have a series pretty soon called, um, a series, a collection called Famous Cartoon Assess Things Collection. So I'm going to put that up there. 
I have a few collections. I have a Powers in Action collection, a Binks collection, my musical friend. Swig for Binks. Here you go. Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome. Hope you're digging the hair. I tried something new today. You know, it's real soft and fluffy. <laughs> Let's see, Sergio says, I read your post on your website page about how you and Rose met. It was really good that you put it up, down on paper. Yeah, that was fun. That was a true story, too. Um, When I first met her, I was really, really poor. I had zero dollars. I had no money. And when we went on, on a first date, I had $40, my whole life savings, I had $40 between what I had in my pocket, the cash I had in my pocket, and the money I had in the bank. So I knew that I had about $20 in the bank, or whatever it was, that equaled $40. And I was so hoping on our first date that she didn't want to go anywhere. <laughs> it's like, I just want to walk around. Let's go look at things. Let's go... Because in Chicago, you could go outside in downtown Chicago and walk and just see things. You could window shop. You could go to museums. There's a lot of free stuff. So we went to Navy Pier. The Navy Pier was real cool because it's a giant mall on the inside. But there's also a few art shops. And you can look at the water, the lake, and you could go on the pier. It's just a lot, a lot of stuff to see. And you don't really have to spend money. Not a lot of money. But we had a few snacks. I bought her. Bought a soda. We had ice cream or something. Maybe you got hot dogs. I forgot what we did. But that was cool because I knew a lot of times when I would go out with when I would go out with um when I would go out different dates and stuff. You always kinda get a read on what's gonna happen if you go on a date and they know you're poor. So it doesn't really last much longer after the second date because you, you know. But with her, she didn't care. She wanted to be with me, not what I had, or so it was cool, and that's how I knew. Was I found someone special who, who um, we liked each other. I didn't care what she what she had or where she came from. I just liked her. She was cool, and when we talked, she listened to what I was saying. Like instead of waiting to talk, she was listening. So I told her about my art career, and at the time I was um, I was struggling. I was sleeping in campsite tech conventions and I was barely publishing Wolf Boy, Patrick the Wolf Boy with Franco and at that time I was dabbling in Hollywood trying to get my foot in the door in Hollywood but she was real interested in that and then and I told her I didn't make any money <laughs> she still wanted to go on a, another date after that so I'm like oh cool so I like her no, like a month later, we got we asked we uh, got engaged, and then then I waited a year to get married because uh, my parents wanted me. They didn't know who she was. I said, "I'm gonna go get married next week." What? You can't do that. But it was okay. It worked out. Now we're we got a big house, three three kids, a dog, two car garage. We got a lawn. I have eleven trees. I have an art studio in the basement, and I haven't left the house since around 2000, 2008, 2009. <laughs> I haven't gotten a haircut in a while. <laughs> my cousin Lori's here. Oh, uh, yeah, Lori. I said, I heard my kids saw you yesterday. They said, hi. We went um visit Grandma and Grandpa yesterday. The kids bike rode with Grandpa around the neighborhood, which is kind of fun. Sweet for my cousin Lori. Do you like that first date story? I noticed that before I was telling that story, I had 12, 12 viewers, and now I'm down five. <laughs> so, morning's too, it's too romantic. To, to get too early to be this romantic in the morning, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Muski. <laughs> because she loves that I know how many trees I have. Because I counted them once. I like in the city, you have a tree but it's in front of your house and it belongs to the city. It's not your tree because your property goes up to the sidewalk 
and then from the sidewalk to the curb it belongs to the city. So if there's a tree there, that's the city's tree. You can't do anything you want. So when we moved in this place here, I have one giant tree in front of my house that belongs to, to the city here. But everything else is around my house and in my backyard. So I counted them. I have 11. Actually, we have 12 now because we planted one. Yeah, that's right. We have an, uh, a young purple tree. It's purple. And it's about four years old, maybe six years old. We planted it as a little stick. And we had to put the... Um, we had to put pipes or poles around it and strap it in every year. And every winter we had to put a bag and cover it so it would survive. But now it's strong enough. It survives on its own. But it's short. It's taller than me, but it it's uh, thin. I've, I don't even know what kind of tree it is. It's purple. But it's really cool. And we planted that in a... And they said it's a lifespan is whatever. Two or three hundred years, whatever. <laughs> but... It's going to go really good and it's going to grow with us. And we planted it when the kids were a little bit little. They were a little smaller. But I think that the tree's going to grow with with us. And I think that was cool. So we have a little purple tree. Sweet. All right. You guys are saying stuff now. We're back. I miss your things. Your, your quotes here. Yeah, 11 trees. Now we got 12. I always... Last time I counted, didn't include that little purple one. Luke Bug is here. Hello from England, you said. I met you at Superman Con. Yeah, I remember that. We, I think we did an interview. I did um, all the interviews I did at Superman Celebration. Like, I did maybe five. And, like, four of them were from people from not from the United States, which was exciting for me. It was everyone from all over the world come to... Uh, Metropolis, Illinois, this little dinky town, just as, because of the love of Superman. So that was real cool. I have to go back there again, but this year it got canceled. But I didn't get invited. I don't get invited every year, but maybe I'll just go to it just to hang out. And Sergio, Sebastian wants to know: Is my wife Mexican? Yes, she is. She's Mexican. She's stoned out Mexican. <laughs> Which means 100%. 100% stoned out crazy Mexican. But I'm Irish and Mexican, so I'm mixed. I'm a mixture. I'm like coffee with a little cream added. I'm uh, I'm Irish and Mexican, and she's Mexican. And our kids are Mexican, Irish, and Mexican. So we have a, we have a nice, unique family. And one day I will have a Mexican-Irish parade with people who are like me. <laughs> I want to do it. We're called urban legends. Anyone mixed with Mexican and something else is called an urban legend. And usually when you're mixed, you don't always know Spanish. And that's me. I don't know. I, I understand Spanish, but I don't speak Spanish. I could hear what they're talking about in Spanish, but, but I understand. And I know what I'm getting yelled at, definitely. Sweet for the Hispanics in our world. Sweet for Mexican blood. It's probably why I like Harold's chicken so much because of the spicy hot sauce. Let's see what you guys are saying. Did you guys ever track down the Gujinana? There's been rumors of the Gujinana sightings, but there hasn't been one in a little while. We got to get back out there and, and investigate. Um, there may be a Gujinana sighting. I've been hearing rumblings, but no evidence yet. We're going to go back out there and hit the hit the forest again. And I might take uh, Skulk with me, Mike Campobasso. I might dress him up and bring him with me because he's he's been uh, showing some some really good tracking skills lately. So I might bring him with me. So you guys are also saying, Newski, she says, a lot of people would take those trees for granted, so it's nice that you noticed. Yeah, I admire the trees. There's one tree we have that we have to, every, I think, two years? Every few years or so, we have to inject it with medicine. Because that type of tree, now I don't, I think it's a, I don't know what, it, I forget what kind of tree it is. 
but all the trees in the woods over here have all been attacked by um by a bug like a spider i don't know what i forget what it's called but the spider killed the trees they they go in there and they eat it they live there and the tree so it turns gray and it falls over and so the, the woods people, <laughs> the people who, giant lawnmowers who cut down trees, they came in and had to clean all the trees out because they were dead. So we found out that our tree was like that, but it didn't get infected. But we inject it with medicine, but we give it a flu shot every year or so. And now it's thriving. It never got infected by this bug, this spider. I forget what it's called. So that's a good tree. We saved that one. And I have... In my 11 trees, I have five squirrels' nests, which the squirrels' nests are real big and they're hanging on the they're hanging on the branches. And when I sit out on my on my deck outside to write stuff, which I'll probably go there today, finish out some story panels. Um, the squirrels look at me, and sometimes they they eat the nuts that are in a tree and they throw them at me. I said they're uh, dropping hand grenades on me, and they hit me in the head, and I got to move over. But I like it, though. And the, the dog goes crazy. He likes to chase the squirrels. But uh, that's, that's my house, though. I like it. I like. I, I grew up on the south side of Chicago in the city. We never had trees. The trees we had had telephone wires connected to them. Then I learned that those weren't trees. They were telephone poles. So that's the only kind of tree I ever had in my yard. But I'm so used to the city life. And I just went there last, I was there yesterday, and just last week I went with my buddies to hang out and eat chicken wings and stuff. But I forget how much I'm so chill now because there's no traffic over here. Well, I never leave the house anyway, but we went downtown Chicago and there's the traffic, there's people. People were wearing masks and they're doing things, but it's still crowded down there. The big buildings, the traffic on the expressway. So I don't miss that part of the city. But I'm used to it. And once I'm in there, I adapt real quick. I just like snap back. You know what to do. You got muscle memory, you know. <laughs> so I knew what to do. But I couldn't wait to get home. And once I'm home, I'm like, and I always think when I go to the city, I'm like, oh, why did we move away? This is kind of cool. The hustle and bustle and the, the speediness and the quick and the people and the, and the buildings and the city. And then when I get home, I'm like, I'm home. I got 11 trees I could chill on my deck where it's quiet. So, best of both worlds. I figured the first 40 years I live in a city. Then the next 40 years I'll live in the suburbs. Be a homeowner, a dad, two-car garage kind of guy. <laughs> well, I used to be the guy struggling to pay his rent with three roommates. You know, living in the city, taking the bus everywhere. Cheers. Sweet from Chicago. Life changes and we adapt, just like Ferris Bueller said. Life moves fast. You know, it's, it's, if you don't pause and take a look, it's gonna pass you right up. Let's see what you guys say. Muski says, "Oh yeah, yes she does." I was just going to ask what kind. I don't know what the name of the trees are, but I got every tree is a different kind of tree. Yeah, all the trees in my yard are different styles of trees. One of them has white blossoms, which is kind of cool. I have two of those, actually. One in front, one in back. And we have to trim it because the one tree on our driveway will grow where the branches <coughs> I mean, the branches grow and when they grow to hang. But that's the style of tree. So we got to cut. We got my brother-in-law is a, a tree surgeon. So he actually cuts branches in the parks. So he does it properly so the tree can grow healthy. So he trims the he trims the branches. And then they close up, like the wound closes, and then they grow. The, the nutrients and the vitamins go up the tree and it becomes bigger. So he saved a lot of our trees. Except for the one getting injected with medicine. <laughs> Sebastian said his dad laughs every time he hears the word Gujinana. Yeah, man, make him laugh. Just walk in the room and say, Gujinana, Gujinana. Luke Bug, thumbs up. Yeah, man, we met. We made history. If you do go back, let me know. Yeah, I, I wanted to go this year, but then the whole stuff happened. Everyone got put on pause. And I'm so used to being put on pause now, which 
if nothing starts back up, I'll be okay with it. I kind of like being home. I kind of like not having to go to the airport or drive real far. It's kind of cool. I'm okay with that. Especially, did I ever read Snoopy and Charlie Brown? Of course. I grew up reading Charlie Brown comic strips in the newspaper. And I would also get those digest books. They were long, little paperback books. I'd, get, I'd had some of those growing up, too. They're real old, but they would have the cover would just be one solid cover, one solid color. Like they'd have a green cover or a red cover, but the characters were white, black and white. That was really cool. I remember those. I had those and I had some uh, Heathcliff comics. A lot of Heathcliff trade paperbacks. Yeah, Muski. Muski did not know about those spiders. Yeah, they're spiders. They get in the tree and they... They're like termites. They get in there and they, they make it fall apart. Branches turn gray and they just fall the Trees fall over. We saved ours though. It's real big. It's one of the tallest trees I have. Mario's here. Morning, Mario. It's it's all the way morning for me, Mario. I'm I got up at 3 a.m. So this is morning. And uh it feels like lunchtime, but it's still morning, so I don't know what's happening to me. I'm uh I don't know what's happening to me, man. My hours are so crazy. I slept twice on Saturday, and I woke up both times without enough sleep. So, and last night I might have slept about three and a half hours. I think I went to bed at midnight, woke up at three. Something like that. It's nuts. But I wake up, and my mind, my mind opens up, and I always say, wake up and do things that make you happy. Well, I wake up and think of those things. <laughs> the answer in my brain is like, man, I got to get to work. And then I just do it. And then I'll, I'll work for five hours and then go back to bed. Because I was about to go lay down right now. But I said, I want to. I saw my bow tie. And I said, I'm going to. And I had good hair. So I'm going to show my people my hair and my bow tie and my thing. But there he is. I want to take a look. I think that's Jack Kirby and Joe Sinna. I think. But I had a whole bunch of pins. When I was a fan still in the 80s. When I was a kid. 16, 17. I was buying a lot of cool stuff. I would go to the conventions and buy, uh, or comic shops and stuff. Just buy stuff. Big fan of buying things. <laughs> yeah. Sergio. Sebastian wants to know, will I ever do another Famous Cartoons Draws Things episode again? Yes. I, um, I have three shows I currently do. And I'm about to add a fourth. The first show is this one. Famous cartoonist says things in the morning. The second one is famous cartoonist draws things, where I draw things at nighttime, usually evening, nighttime. I sometimes, those shows sometimes go two or three hours long. And then my Saturday show is called Famous Cartoonist Paints Things. And I love doing that show. Um, I painted this Wolverine Spider Man one. I just get in there and paint it, go nuts, just tackle it. And I got this done in about two hours, which, um, it's not a thing I try to do fast, but when I paint quickly, it just comes out cool. You can see all of the, the lines are real painterly, and the paintings are not as neat as my drawings, which I really like. And it's just something I do. I'm probably a painter first before a comic book artist. Because when I grew up and went to school, I was learning how to paint. Um, I learned a lot of paint techniques and, and airbrushing and all this stuff, but I learned that I like to paint messy and sloppy and get stuff on the floor and on my hands and clothes. And that's where I have the most fun and the most energy comes out of the painting. But, so I'll be painting again this week. I, I have three commissions since Saturday. I'm going to paint a Super Pets painting. I'm going to paint uh, a Boba Fett Bosque painting, some Bounty Hunters from Star Wars. And I'm going to paint Green Goblin and Mysterio. Those are upcoming. Those are the upcoming episodes. The next one will probably be the super pet one with Jumpa, Crypto. I already have the sketch. I'm going to show you guys the sketch design. I designed them already. And if Danny's watching, he ordered some too. Here they are right here. These three paintings I'm painting next. This is the Green Goblin and Mysterio. This is Bosque and Boba Fett. And right here is Super Pets. You can see them. They're going to look similar, similar to that. Those are the sketches because... Um, they don't come out exactly like the sketch, but 
I have to get a layout design before I jump in with the paint because uh, I got to know kind of where I'm going. And then I take a look, the paint takes over and I do my thing. But that's real fun. So I'll be doing that Saturday. Everything should work out. And this Wednesday, I'm going to be on a Jamar. Jamar, yeah, Jamar Nicholas. I always call him Jamal by mistake, but it's Jamar. It's my friend. I know him for 20 years. I'm going to be on his show. Pencil, I think it's called Pencil to Pencil. I'm going to be on his Facebook channel. These are channels now. Everyone puts videos. But I was saying, like, I do these shows. And my fourth show, I'm going to reveal. I kept wanting to do it the last few weeks. But it's called Famous Cartoonist Reveals Things, where I show you my toy collection and stuff. I just reveal things to you. I show you things and talk about it. So that would be cool. It's almost like a show and tell kind of show. Swig for revealing things. Let's see what you guys are saying. I keep going on these rants and the comments are getting away. Let's see. The Jamie Farr cameo <laughs> in the Tad Stones podcast was awesome. Yeah, it was cool to listen to Tad Stones. I met him several times, but never really talked to him for very long. I meet him in San Diego every year. But in San Diego, when someone comes to your table, you talk to them. Me and Franco are talking to him. And then another person comes, and we have to trade. Like, whoever shows up, now he's talking to Ted, and I'm talking to whoever just showed up. So that happens a lot. San Diego's so busy, and that's what we do. So I met Ted a lot of times. He always says hi to our tables. But the one time I got to really talk to him is when we were, we were waiting for our dinner table. We are outside of a restaurant waiting. We put our name on a list, and we... We uh, were outside waiting for our table to be, or our name to be called, and that's when we got to talk to him for about a half an hour. And that was really cool. That's where I got to know him. And I didn't really know. Uh, I knew he created Darkwing Duck, but I didn't really know about what him. I got to know him and what he draws and what he's thinking about, so that's real cool. So it was cool to have him on a podcast because uh, we were all, man, we were all attentive. We were listening. There was no goofing around. But I thought I had some cool questions for him. I asked him some cool stuff that I wanted to know. So I try to ask him the stuff that no one asks. Everyone always asks, what were your influences? Where'd you grow up and all that? But I always want to know, do they carry a sketchbook? Or what time did they go to bed? What are your hours like? Are you ever a vampire? And I asked Mike Magnola that. I asked Mark Wade that. I asked um, uh, uh Darwin Cook at the point, and uh, uh, Jeff Darrow. I always ask them that those questions. And it's real cool to hear what they say because a lot of what they say is exactly what I'm doing. And they always tell me they used to be vampire until they caught up on their work and then everything leveled off. Or they said when they had kids or when they got older. And so I can't wait for that day to happen where I could just <laughs> have normal people hours. But then again, I don't know. I work better like this where everything's so random and crazy. Let's see what people are saying now. Yeah, the Jamie Farr video was cool, man. I like how he said all our names. Luke Bug says, all the way from Britain. He says, hello, love. He says, hey, I have to get back to work now, but it was great seeing you. Relax. It's great seeing you. Relax. Yeah. I love to have you on a podcast. I know we're supposed to do a podcast. I, I want to do that too, Luke. We'll we'll um we'll exchange the time. As I know you're like 15 hours ahead of me or something. But normally I'm a vampire, so I could record at all kinds of weird times. And sometimes I'm just going to bed at 10 a.m. So it's weird. But today I'm up. So so uh yeah, we'll do it. I'll be on your pod. We'll talk about Superman. We'll talk about babies. Whatever you want to do. We're talking about a lot of trees today. <laughs> so did you get in trouble for drawing in class like I used to? Yes, I did. I used to uh, draw on all of, all of my homework. Um, when they give you worksheets in class, I'd always draw on all the gutters, on all the margins. And then I'd turn the paper over and draw on the back. But normally, I wouldn't get in trouble. Um, so I would draw on the back, but i get in trouble drawing on the front. But then my daughter started doing that, and they were, they were telling her to stop. And I told her, don't stop. <laughs> she said, I got in trouble. I said, just keep doing it. You know, they, they can't stop you. Why would you want them to stop? 
So why would a teacher want you to stop doing what's coming natural to you? She's drawing, she's doodling, she's writing margins, writing little notes. Swig for writing notes. Mark Flanagan Slyke is here. Good morning, Mark. He has a question. Were you in a Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans movie? I know your characters are in it, but there was a guy in it who looked like you. Really? You know, I haven't seen the whole movie. I have to watch it. But I'm not aware of that. But I'm going to say, yes, that's me. <laughs> I don't know if I was in I got to watch it. Because they did that. I didn't know the characters were in the movie. And they did that without letting me know. And the way, the way I found out was fans told me. And I saw clips and stuff online. So that was cool. But I have the movie. I have the DVD. I bought it, but I never opened it yet. We have to watch it. I just haven't had time to sit down and put a movie on and just watch stuff. Only time I watch TV, it's all at weird times and random. But I'm watching Clone Wars with the boys now and then, which is kind of cool. The masks were awesome, by the way. Yeah, man, I have my mask here. For those of you just joining, look what I got. It's my electric milk mask. <laughs> well, just, I didn't have it on all the way. That's not a default. I just got to put it behind my ear. See? But I got mask on my Threadless site. You could get all my designs. I got characters. I got all kinds of stuff. But this is my company, Lolo. I had this company since around 1990. Electric Milk. It's incorporated. It's my art studio. Electric Milk. Because once you're infected with the milk, and once you take a swig of the electric milk, you got it. It's in you forever. You're electrified. <laughs> and Patsy's here. Hey, Aunt Patsy. You still have your original Fred Flintstone guy. Oh, yeah. I got lots of original uh, Flintstones collection. I sh I'm going to unveil my, I'm going to reveal my cl Flintstone collection on an episode of uh, Famous Cartoonist Reveals Things. I have to find a, like a time slot, a day. But if I finish my Archimaniacs, I'll have maybe some time during the week. But I have, um, I have slated on my <laughs> famous cartoons reveals things. I'm going to do my Star Wars collection, my vintage Star Wars action figure collection, my custom Mego collection, and my Flintstones collection. I got a lot of old Flintstone stuff, but I got a lot of stuff from the 80s when, when Denny's was selling a lot of Flintstone things. But I have all kinds of different era. I got a cool Flintstone ashtray I want to show. I, I'm just going to show things. So you're going to see some of that stuff. I got a lot of original Flintstones. I got you, Mark Vance. Like walking his dog, looking like you. <laughs> He's walking his dog and just looks just like me. Well, thank you. That means something. <laughs> Sebastian said, I used to always do that with my old teacher. And now my new teacher lets me draw my cartoons. Yeah, they have to let you draw cartoons. I don't understand why teachers would get mad at that. Because that's what the kid's going to be. And I started really drawing a lot in fifth grade. I drew all the time. But in fifth grade is when I knew I wanted to draw, I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. It's kind of like, kind of like how Tiger Woods was playing, what's he do, play tennis or he golfs? He picked up the golf club when he's two years old. He just kept going. It becomes part of your life. And I knew that cartooning was just going to be part of what I do. It's what I do. I don't know. I can do other things. But even if I spend the day doing something else, I'm going to come home and I'm going to draw. And yesterday, I took the kids. We visited Grandma Grandpa. And I deliberately left my sketchbook home. Not on purpose. Not like I'm not going to take it. But... I remember last time I went, I brought it, and I didn't draw on it, and I just carried it around. So I left it home yesterday, but the whole time I felt, man, I should have brought it. It's not here with me. I don't have it. I want to write stuff down, even though if I don't write stuff down, just knowing that it's, just knowing that I have it with me is a big deal. And that's what I have it. It's real close. I got my book all the time. It's real close. And I just ordered, I just ordered a new sketchbook from 
<laughs> with my logo on it so it's cool so you can get sketchbooks from threadless too it's cool and uh, i just like everything that everything i like everything that involves being an artist like every day you wake up and think about creating things jc cotton's here i love you man oh he loves me your master awesome thank you jc cotton i have much affection for you too my brother or my sister jc i'm assuming you're a guy but that's cool i'm gonna i'm gonna do a virtual fist bump for you all right here we go watson johnny's here what's up johnny what do you think man i'm using wolverine as a display today showing him off before he meets you later today swig for wasson johnny waste son waste son johnny i always say wasson swing for waste on johnny waste son johnny's really a ninja he knows the he knows the bruce lee death touch fist bump back <laughs> danny's here love the live painting show thanks danny i'm gonna paint another one i told him earlier i have i have to paint a super pet painting this this week and then then the next week i'll paint either uh probably boba fett and bosk or uh green goblin mysterio one of those will happen and you will see it and thank you so much for sending me a, an email today you are awesome you guys keep me alive man all the stuff I say to you and then the love you return to me keeps me doing this stuff every day. And I'm revealing my hair. If you're just joining us, if you're just joining me, if you're just part of the group right now, this is my hair. I'm showing you my hair, what's under the hat. There's been many requests. We said, we want to see your hair. And I got curly locks. And I'm very confident with it. It's very clean. It's soft. It looks beautiful. It accentuates me. And then if I don't shave, it just adds some shadow. I said, I don't want to look like a bum, but I want to look a little haggard, like I've been working hard. <laughs> like every moment counts. There's not one minute wasted. One minute, every minute is devoted to doing something. Swig for not wasting minutes. Sergio Reno is how? He's saying how? I don't know what the question is for. Is a I don't know. Danny said, "Love the story about your dad saying he was Batman." Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I didn't believe him until he brought home that red phone. He brought home a red phone, and then I waited for it to ring all day long. I was waiting for that phone to ring so I could answer it. Yes, Commissioner. And it wasn't the Commissioner on the line. It was someone else. I remember it was a lady. I don't know. Artie. Get your mom. Is your mom there? Is your dad? No, Batman's, Batman's not home. <laughs> it's a call back. <laughs> it's true. Danny likes the hair. That's yeah, pretty good, right? It's getting a little white in places. A little thin in other places. I'm going to keep going until it doesn't work. I'm going to see how far I can take this. Because probably the next show, probably the next appearance I'll do is... Uh, if everything goes well, will be C2E2 in March of 2021. But I have a feeling that things are not going to be well by then. Just my instinct. My internal clock is telling me. We will still be under mask and key by then. I think so. And he says, this is quite the hair. Thank you. JC. JC Cotton says, your current look reminds me of Hank Pym. Hmm. Hank Pym is a very handsome man, so I think I'm going to say thank you. And um, I'm just like him, except for I can't grow or shrink. I stay the same size. I've been this size since around eighth grade. <laughs> I was six foot tall in eighth grade, and I'm only about, I'm six foot three when I was in high school. But I may have shrunk a little bit. I might be six foot two and a half now, or six one. I'm not sure. I did shrink a little bit because a lot of my taller friends are even more taller than me now. 
but I measure myself on the cabinet. Like when, you know, when the kids grow up, you take a marker and mark off top of their heads and you go up the side of the cabinet. Well, I started marking myself and every few years I mark it again and it, I, I shrink a little. <laughs> I don't know why that is. That's how I know I'm an old guy now. I have two beverages here. And I'm going to take a swig of the cold one. Oh, that much. That feels much better. It's bash insane. When you went to college, did you have to learn math, etc., or did you go straight to writing and drawing lessons? Yeah. When I went to college, I had to uh, take it all. I had history, math, science, English, writing. But I had to take all those all those classes because I wanted my bachelor degree. And if I didn't want my bachelor degree, I could have just got an associate's degree and just took took all my art courses. But I wanted a bachelor degree. So I have a bachelor of arts degree. So I, I did take English, math, history, science, health class. I took, uh, I took a whole bunch of stuff. And but when I went to school, I went for for art. I learned how to, I went for illustration. So I learned how to draw and I learned how to paint. And the time I went to school, you either had to choose illustration or graphic design. And I didn't like graphic design because it's not me. I want to draw things and create things. So I never had a computer class in my four and a half years of college. I couldn't finish college in four years, so I went five years. But I couldn't, I never in those years have I ever had touched a computer. I used to do my papers on a typewriter. And at that time, I went to, I graduated in 1992. So at that time, I was able to hand in my, my paperwork or my stories and stuff. I used to write them, print them out and I hand it to the teacher or I'd make copies and hand them the copy. And that was acceptable. I didn't have them. I didn't have a computer. I had a typewriter, and if I ran out of ink, I couldn't do it. So I went to school for drawing, drawing and painting, and I had a, a minor in fiction writing. So I took four years of drawing and painting, and then I took like three years of fiction writing. So I, um, I went to school for writing and drawing because I wanted to make comics. I wanted to draw books. I wanted to make children's books, comic books, and... I'm going to be an artist. So I went to a school that was an art school, a Bachelor of Arts school, but I took the courses that I wanted to take that would help me in what I chose to do in my career. Instead of following what they, they give you a curriculum, here's what you have to do. Like, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do my own. And that was that's the cool thing about Columbia College. I went to Columbia College in Chicago. And that's what I did. I uh, made it what I needed it to be so I could learn what I wanted to learn. And the classes I didn't like, I would try to pass them. And I didn't do well in them. But I always got A's in art class and A's in writing. So that was cool because I really loved doing that kind of stuff. And D. Brad's here. You just got up. Oh, I know, man. You're like, Australia has a different time zone. So it's like, um, it's like 2 in the morning for you. No, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're only two hours behind. But I apologize for being so early today. But I've been I've been awake for since about three, and um, I don't know how long I'll be away. I might have to take a nap after this. But I'm gonna try to finish. I got a page here I'm working on with uh, Supergirl and Comet, the Super Horse. I'm gonna hand in some more pages. Got a lot of stuff to do. But I feel the end in sight. I feel like I, I'm going to be finishing a lot of books, and I'm real happy with that. So I can work on more stuff. I like I like working on things so I can finish things to work on the next thing. And I found out that's what keeps me going. Because if I run out of things to do, oh, I never will. If I run out of things to do, I'll just make up new stuff. That's just what happens. Swig. I'm taking a swig of the cold stuff because I'm getting dry. I, I drank a whole pot of coffee today, so I had that tart bitterness. It just dries you out, so now I need to hydrate. 
because what caffeine does to you, it replaces the water in your body with caffeine. So it actually is dehydrating you if you drink too much. So you have to drink tea or something. Drink something that has more water. It's true. That's what I learned in uh, college, taking those science classes too. <laughs> J.C. Cotton is 15 hours ahead. He's behind. J.C. Cotton is from someplace else, it sounds like. Or is that Australia? D. Brad's from an island in Canada, Vancouver Island. He lives with uh, tribal tribal people, savages, paint on their faces and burn things at night to wake them up. <laughs> I don't know. It's like Grimace Island over there. He has tiki gods and stuff. Surges, how did your parents feel when you got hired from DC Comics? Oh, they were happy. They were real proud. And when I started working on Superman, I told my dad and he... Uh, He's like, wait a minute, you're working on comic books, working at DC Comics, and they're letting you work on Superman. I said, yeah. And he goes, well, you made it. Where else do you go from here? I'm like, you're right. So it's kind of like, kind of like going to Disney and they let you work on, on Mickey Mouse. So it's, it was real cool. So that was a big milestone for me and um, for the whole family. Because now, once you work for DC Comics, Warner Brothers, like I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm one of their guys now. I'll be one of their guys forever. No matter if I'm working, I'm working on a book or not, I'll, I'm a Warner Brother guy. I'm Disney. I, I work with Disney too, so I'll be, always be a Disney guy. Always be a DC Comics guy. I work for both of those companies, and it's just cool. It's just awesome, and I can't believe it either. But there's a lot of things you do in your life, and you, you, you build your career and head for a goal. When you get there, hold on to it. Just keep going. Do whatever you got to do. Even if it means going on your Facebook channel and talking for an hour. <laughs> Drink coffee with your people. JC Khan is in Florida. That's true. I'm going to say Florida is a good place. I've been to Florida several times. I like it there. Did I ever read Captain Underpants or Dogman? Yes. I have one of the early... Probably the first Captain Underpants book. Because I heard much about it and I bought it. And it's a little trade paperback, black and white. I have that. Um, I was close to meeting Dave Pilkey. I missed him by five minutes. He was at a book because I go to a lot of book shows and conventions. And I missed him because I just missed him. Uh, I, wasn't, I was around, but I wasn't aware that he was like 10 feet away from me. And then when I saw people with the poster and I went and he just left. So, but I just wanted to meet him. And uh, I seen Dogman, I, I looked at it. We have it in our store and all your comics, comic shops, we sell it. So I did read through it a little bit and it's really funny. But my kids, my kids have a few of those books and, but they like, um, my kids like to re read Wimpy Kid and they like to read Smile and Guts from Raina Talgemeyer. So it's real cool. But I'm honored to be in that group sometimes. The funny thing is like when I draw comics and other publishers will say, um, can you draw a lot more like Dogman? And I'll say, no, I draw like me. <laughs> or they'll say something like, this looks like Dogman or hopefully it is, you know. It's kind of like falls in the same category. But it's kind of cool. But I got my book, Drew and Jot is my... Uh, book that I drew on notebook paper. It's really fun. It fits in the same category as Dog Man and Underpants and Wimpy Kid. It was kind of fun. I will meet Dave Pilkey one day. I know I have friends who work with him. D. Brads asks, do my kids read my comics? Yeah, all the time. They all read my books. And a lot of times if I don't, they pick up a comic and I say, did you write this one? I'll say, no, then they won't read it. But if I say yes, they'll read it. <laughs> So they love my books. They read them. They stay. I put the books on the table, and then if they get moved around, I know somebody read it or picked it up. But then they ask me questions, which is really fun. And then they want me to order them T-shirts and things with the characters on them. So it's kind of fun. But I'll surprise them one day. I'll say, which which one of my characters is your favorite? 
And when I answer right away, then I know that it's true. They really read the book. So it's fun. Mario's here. He said his daughter loves Dogman and Guts. Yeah, those those were good books. And those books are perfect for uh, the young kids, the middle school grades. And it seems like that's a lot of my books are targeted for the middle schoolers, which is awesome. And the Super Pet books I'm doing are like chapter books. And they're targeted more for younger, first, second grade, maybe six, six, seven, eight year olds. Even younger, four, five, five, six. But they're cool. And they're all on Amazon now. And it's a lot of the covers are up there, but no pressure. <laughs> Pre orders are in. The pre-orders are in for my Super Pet books. So uh, that, that makes me like, oh man, I got to finish them. Because they're coming out, they have a due date and everything. My mom's here. <laughs> Morning, mom. I've been up since about 3 o'clock. Mom's going to get nervous. Go to bed. Yeah. The bed, so when, when are you showing your toys? Or did I miss it? I did not make that. I did not make my toy show yet. I'm going to try to. I keep saying Friday, Friday. But we'll see. I want to get... I got to get a few things done. I want to finish Archimaniacs. Then I did a painting show on Saturday. And Friday, I was... Um, last Friday, I was drawing all day, working. And I was just concentrating on trying to get my work done. Because we, we did a podcast Thursday with Tad Stones and Jamie Farr. So maybe this week, I'll be able to uh, do a reveals. Famous cartoonist reveals things. I'm going to show my amigos. Yeah, I'm gonna show my uh, I'm gonna show my custom egos because I haven't I have it all set. I just have to point the camera to it and turn it on and start talking. I was gonna do it Saturday, but I did a painting show Saturday, and I didn't start till six. But I realized that I had more viewers at six o'clock at night than if I did it at two in the afternoon, and. When I was done with my painting show on Saturday, I realized that 380 people viewed it. So, plus I think it was too hot, real hot outside. A lot of, there was rain in places, so people were indoors. And they really watched, they were in their air conditioning. So, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. And I painted this guy, Wolverine and Spidey. So, that was a good time. And this, this week, I'm going to paint a super pet painting. With uh, Jumpa, Ace, Crypto, and Robin Robin. They're all going to be on there. That's going to be a fun one. Maybe I'll do a reveals one. Sunday? I don't know. I'll do it. It's coming, man. Like, what days are good for you guys? Like, during the week or the weekends? Seems like during the week is okay. I got this. I'm the demon of this earth. Listen. I got this. Yeah, Jamie Farr was cool. Jamie Farr was cool to hear him say, Yoko Chips. <laughs> Artie, Yoko Chips, Scoot. That was cool to hear him say stuff. Swig for Jamie Farr. I got to get Ozzy Gian on that cameo. I got I to gotta send Ozzy some money so he can record something for me. Uh, once they said Ozzy, Ozzy game was only 50 bucks, I was real excited. During the week works the best, right? Right? So everyone has a routine during the week. I'm going to do a video. I'll do the reveals one probably maybe an evening this week. Because I like, if I could, uh, it don't matter what time I do it. Like, either I'm going to draw before or after. But if I do something like um, in the early evening, 5, 6, 7, something like that. The reveals want to be cool. It'll be like my drawing my drawing video, but you'll see my toys instead. Then I'll talk about it. I'll get excited. JC Cotton says, thank you. He's saying thank you to my mom for giving us such an amazing artist. <laughs> and generally good person. Oh, thank you, JC. Cool, man. And, uh, yeah, my mom's cool. They, uh, they like having a famous cartoonist for her son. An adult man. I produced children for them. They have grandkids. Me and my beautiful wife. I have a family. 
And it's cool. You can be proud of that. Alvin Long is here. Good morning. He said, I love having physical copies of reading materials, but will any of your books be available in a Kindle? Like the Fire. Kindle Fire. Right now, my books are available on Comixology, which you could download to your reading device, your digital device. I have to upload them for a Kindle, um, but it requires me re-uploading them and reformatting them. So I'll probably do that too. I just need time to do it. Um, I know how to, I just need time to do it. But right now, if you have any devices, you could go to Comixology and download their app and uh, you can read my books. You could buy their own, most of them are 99 cents. You could download the ones you want, read them. And it's cool because you can swipe the panels. Comixology makes them where you could either read them as a full page if you got a nice big screen, or if you don't, you can read them in panel by panel. You can swipe the panels and they're kind of cool. And I like Comixology also because it allows me to publish comic books that I wouldn't normally be able to publish because anytime I print a book, it costs me a few thousand bucks. So I could publish on Comixology until I do save some money to print the book. But it's real, real rewarding for me. It frees me up creatively. creatively I could upload a story and you guys can read it. And that's real fun. It's like um, the online stuff really, really, it changes the way things are. Like um, selling t-shirts online, uh, doing Patreon and, and websites, all these things. Like I have a lot of physical copies of my books on my website, but it's really cool to sell the digital ones too. So really the digital era in these trying times. And like the digital stuff really helps out. It's really fun to do. It's very rewarding when people find your books and they find a way like, I know people like don't like digital as much, but it's cool when people download them and they, they read them and I can see the sales and stuff. It's pretty cool. It's fun to see like, I might sell like 63 books like in a month and they're like, I got 63 downloads. Like, oh, that's cool. You know, that means 63 people. And every, every time, like um, every time I see the sales for the months, what really makes me happy is like when people buy my Cray Baby book. Like every month I get like three or four new readers for Cray Babies. And that's my very first self-published book I've ever done. And I'm just amazed by that, that people are looking into my older stories, even though they're kind of, even though they're kind of weird, my old co comics. And when I was going to release them again, I thought about changing the story and updating and making it better using my 28 years of cartooning skills to enhance it, but I decided not to. I put it out the way I I originally put it out. I didn't correct anything. I didn't correct the word spellings. I just put it out the way I originally published it. And the only thing I did was I added color to the background. I kept the characters like those Charles Schultz covers. I kept the characters black and white, but I just put a nice pale color behind them just to make the characters pop off the background a little bit. And I think that's cool. But I left the original books the way I originally published them. So if you really want to see how I learned how to make comic books, you could read Cray Babies number one through 10 and really see how the series developed and how it got better as each issue went by. Like the first issue is uh, the hardest book I've it's cool and fun. People dig it, but it's out of my opinion, it's the hardest book to read that I ever made because it's like, you gotta be patient. And I know my wife tried reading it and she couldn't get through it, but it's fun. I, I made it when I was about 20 years old and, um, it was fun. But by the time you get to issue three of the Cray Baby Adventures, the story takes place and it just goes really cool. So issue three to 10 is really nice. I found my rhythm and I learned how to do stuff. I learned how to make comics by drawing the Cray Baby comic. So you guys should like it. And I'm going to re re uh, revisit them again with more Cray Baby comics, but I have to I have to get there first. But I have a lot of ideas for things. I have a lot of, a lot of cool ideas. Let's see what you guys are saying. Ronald's here. Hey, Ronnie. Morning to you. And Sebastian says, 
hey, Mr. Baltazar, I'm going to publish a book, and I am 11. It's not a graphic novel, but it has a few illustrations to be released. By the end of the year, and if you could have time to read it, you think it's good. Do you think you would consider writing a forward? Ooh, that might be cool. Yeah, man, I'll do that for you. I'll write something. Yeah, write to me. Send me a message. Uh, my email's on my site, or send me a message, Facebook message. I'll do something for you, man. That'll be cool. And Alvin Long, cool, good to know. I provided Alvin some knowledge. He has knowledge. See that? JC Cotton, you're on Patreon. Yes, I am. I'm on there. It's mostly, uh, I sell posters mostly. I mail you posters. I need a swig. I'm on Patreon. I don't have many people. I only have like maybe 10 or 11 backers. You could join. You could join for a dollar or two bucks, whatever it is. Or you could buy a poster and I mail you a poster every month. They're either like 15 bucks or 20 bucks. And I mail you posters. And I have the poster people are on there all the time. But I have a lot of people joining in, joining out. And my intentions was to post things from my secret things from my sketchbook, which I will get back into it. But the problem that's been happening is my phone can't take photographs. And that's why my Patreon has been uh, neglected slightly. And I try to keep up with it, but I can't take photos. And it's so weird. The app I have the app on my phone, but my phone's... None of my devices work. They run out of storage and they're old. I need to get a new phone so I can do that. But if you if you subscribe, that'd be cool. And I try to I try to upload stuff from my secret sketchbook. So you do see stuff that's not available anywhere else. And I am planning on doing more with that once I clear up some of this work. And my my deadlines and my books have been taken over my every hour of the day. So I do have to get things done before I could do other personal things, which I have more fun doing the, the personal things, but we'll see what happens. Albums are not great for signed copies, though. Oh, for digital? Oh, Ronnie says, I loathe digital art, but I have to admit I need to learn it. I can't open a program. That, I can't open a pro yet. Well, the digital is a, digital is a tool, because I it's a tool to help you. So I love drawing on paper and painting. I love real hands-on work. I love when the ink's in your, on your hands and paints in your hair. I love all that stuff. But digital, you got it's necessary. Necessary to um, it's necessary to get the job done, and that's why I like digital. Because all the work, all the work's done. The publishing is done digitally. Printing is done digitally. So it's weird. And um. JC says, oh, that's that's so cool. I'm definitely joining your page. Yeah, man. Yeah, join it. The coolest part about it is like, oh, then Danny just announced it. Arts Patreon posters are awesome. Contribute. Yeah, the posters are what I really like because I want to make something that I could send to people because I know that Patreon is really works out well when you have something physical that you can send people. So I do, I do make posters. And if you join up for a poster... Um, don't, um, don't get nervous if you don't get one every month, because if I skip a month, you'll get two the next month. So I don't forget you. I'm keeping track. Well, sometimes I can't make it to Stinko's or Kinko's copies. And the weird part, like the last month I had problems because I had this cool flash drive. I had this little box here. This is a present I got in 2008. As you can see. We used to have a flash drive in there, and I lost my flash drive. I couldn't find it. I lost it in like March, and I know I I had to leave it at Kinko's when I made a copy, FedEx Kinko's, because I left it there several times before, and I would go back or they would call me up and, but somebody I left it and it's gone, and so I didn't have a flash drive to download my poster to to go make the copies so that took a while and i had to go buy a flash drive so now i have one so that's what was the delay the last time so it's all this technology delay like i can't take photos of my phone 
I lose my flash drive. <laughs> but the DC Comics flash drive was real cool because it said DC Comics was printed on it. It had a little leather case. So somebody, whoever found it, got something cool. But unfortunately, I lost it or forgot it somewhere. Because I know I, I, I had it after C2E2. Like, you know, I'm not going to cry about it. I just bought another one. A new one. Because my thing is no fighting. Stop fighting. Stop, no crying. No fighting. They're nice to each other. So I'm not going to cry. So Eric's here. Hi, Eric. You're on break. Hope the day's going good. Yeah, it's so far, man. It feels like midday for me right now. Sergio says, Sadly, it's time for me to go. I will send you a message about my book and I hope you can write the forward. Yeah, man. Send me a copy of your book. Let me read it. And then I'll get... Uh, Give you my thoughts and forward so it could be genuine i give you something genuine because <laughs> you're awesome but uh have a good day sebastian and i'm glad eric's here on break jc's awesome well, i've been talking for over an hour hour 15 minutes i got a swig of uh luke, luke skywalker coffee it's lukewarm Do you ever know what <laughs> the temperature of a tauntaun is? Of the inside of a tauntaun? It's lukewarm. Swig. Swig for Star Wars. Hopefully this weekend maybe I'll get to watch more Clone Wars and I'll have a Clone Wars update for you guys. I haven't been watching anything. I've been listening to a lot of music. When I work, I have a lot of music on. Ronnie says, don't even know how he's about to learn digital art. Yeah, you just got to jump in and do it. And Kevin Bixby's here. Oh, yeah, Bixby. Yeah, I don't know either, man. I had to learn it after I graduated college. You just learn it. Follow the tutorials. Just get on. Just get the program. I bought a Photoshop. I bought Manga Studio. I just had a just had to work at it. And just, now I know how. As long as it keeps working, I'm going to keep it going. Yeah, so Kinko's is good for reproduction poster size. Yeah, I make um, my posters are 11 by 17 and I make them at Kinko's. I get them on the cardstock paper. So far, that's where I print them. I know I could get, I could get them cheaper elsewhere if I order posters. But when you order Patreon posters, I only make enough for the Patreon backers. I don't make more. So if you want the poster, you have to buy it from my Patreon, and then it's exclusive for you. Like I don't make extra to sell. I, if I got three people, I make three posters and send them. Maybe I'll make an extra one for myself to hang up, but normally I don't. I make just three, and then I'll send them to the people, and then uh, I won't make more because I feel like they're contributing. And I, if you could just buy it at a convention, I don't want that, you know. So my Patreon guys are special. They get something cool and special if I'm going to send you something. If you're going to contribute to my Patreon, I'm going to send you something just for you, it's, which is really cool. Bixby says, Harold. Planting the idea. <laughs> it might happen this week. Today, I don't know. I might have to take a take a nap after this. Because I'm meeting my friend, Waysan Johnny. Meeting him later. Sebastian's back. That was quick. Eric says, sorry, time went fast. Back to work. Man, it's good to see you, Eric. I think I'm glad you uh, chimed in. Tagged in, tagged up. D. Brad said, I missed your live painting stream because I went... Whale watching. Wow, you saw 21 humpback whales and 20, 200 bald eagles. That's cool, man. You could always watch the video later, but seeing a whale live seems uh, more exciting to me. I saw a video where sharks were jumping out of the water, too. Someone's watching sharks jump out of water. It's kind of cool. Did you guys make it to Harold's the other day? We only went to Harold's that one time. But uh, Harold's was closed, so we ate, we ate at the King's Chicken. 
it was okay. Keynes is a good backup, I guess, but it's not Harold's. We got to do Harold's. We'll do it this week. We got to do it, man. Because I, I need it. I need Harold's chicken. And that's a he just said, Oh, he didn't. I'm jonesing for sweet, sweet Harold's sauce. Yeah, man. Elvin says I'm dropping a sweet and serious knowledge today. Yeah. The knowledge is coming. It's it's being sprayed <laughs> with all this because my the hair is not the head is not holding it in. Look at that hair. Isn't that beautiful hair? People tell me your haircut, but I'm gonna let it get big. So imagine this in two more weeks. Imagine two more months. It's gonna be big. GC has to get going. It's all right, man. So good seeing you. So things to get people. I have things to do with people to annoy. I set up notifications so I won't miss any more streams. Love chatting. Looking forward to the next stream. Thanks, man. Yeah, if you're watching now and you want to know when I talk, you can put notifications. I don't know how to do that, but it's somewhere in the video. You can press a button or click on something, and you'll be notified when I go live. So I go live like almost every day, at least three or four times a week. It's either me drawing here or talking here or drawing at night or painting on the weekends. Like I said, I got four shows. Famous cartoonist says things. Famous cartoonist draws things. Famous cartoonist paints things. And the new one, soon to debut this week, Famous Cartoonist reveals things. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure I do it this week. Probably Friday. Thursday or Friday. Seems like Thursday we... Seems like Thursday is our day for all oh yeah podcasts. So maybe I'll save that, but I'll, I'll probably do a Friday reveals things show. That'll be fun, right? I'm going to show you my Migos. Custom Migos will be the first show because I have that ready to go. Then I'm going to do a Star Wars show, and then I'm going to do a Flintstones collection. Maybe some Hannah Barbera stuff thrown in there, too. Some vintage. But you guys are awesome. I think I'm going to get going because I have to um, finish up the stuff. I only have – I don't have that many more pages to finish for my this current Super Pet book. And I like to finish it because uh, I sent them a bunch of stuff, but I didn't hear from the editor yet, which is good. That means they're busy. It's Monday morning. got things to do. When did you have your last haircut? I don't even remember. I got a haircut for C2E2 last year. And C2E2 was February. So I probably got a haircut in January, February. And it's been, but when I get hair haircut, I get it real short, like buzzed at like a four. So I could wear my hats. Because right now I can't wear hats unless it's like a fedora or something. Because my flat caps, they get pushed up because <laughs> my hair pushes them up. Or my baseball caps, the hair sticks out like, uh, remember in the 70s, Jose Cardinal, his hair was real puffy. Or like George Orta from the White Sox. His hair, you see the hair, it comes outside like, almost like Bozo. So I don't want to do that. And if I wear a hat and my hair, it starts to look like a mullet. So I don't want that to happen. You see how beautiful it looks? It's so soft. So I'm going to let it go. I think I'm going to grow it. I got nowhere to go. And it looks cool. You guys seem to be digging it. <laughs> Ronnie says, in Thailand one year, I swam out to the island, off the coast of Rayang. Oh, wait, let me see what it says. I want to know what it said now. Didn't know it, but the waters were seriously shark infested. Yeah, man. Don't do that, dude. Stay on shore. <laughs> or make sure they have, there's no sharks. I'm glad you survived. No whales. Yeah, whales. I don't think whales will attack unless they're killer whales. Blue whales probably won't care. They're too big to care. JC, if, if everyone scrolls up there as a message, you can click on a link to burn to turn on notifications. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, there's a link to turn on notifications. It should be at the top of the video, yeah. Famous cartoonist reveals his junk. I am going to reveal my junk. <laughs> but there's different meanings for junk. It'll be my collectibles. And Kevin Bixby says, it's good hair. Yeah, I'm okay with my hair. This is the hairline my family has. It eventually turns white. And uh, I don't mind that either. I'm getting some white in the beard. But I think I'm going to go. I like the hairy look. I like looking haggard. It makes it look like I'm working. 
But then if you go too haggard, it makes it look like you're homeless. But the, the tie, you know, what do you think? The tie? I got this. See that? I think that's Joe Sinat Inks. Could be Kirby. But you guys are awesome. Yeah, have I met Raina? Yeah, Raina's a friend of mine. I know her. Yeah. I invite her to my store all the time, but we got to do something. And uh, my daughter's a big fan of her. And every time I see her, I take a selfie with her and text it to my girl. The bow tie is sick. Yeah, man. I Thanks, man. I ordered a bunch from... Uh, I ordered a bunch. I got a package of bow ties. I like to have neckwear for you guys. Bow ties. I'm real comfortable with bow tie. They look cool. And I like the ascots. And I got bandanas. I got a lot of cool stuff. But I'm going to get going. And then uh, I'm really happy you guys joined me. I really like doing this. I like telling you guys stuff. And it gets me going. Drawing live tonight? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, if I go live tonight, it'll probably be late. Maybe 8, 9 o'clock my time. And if not, it'll be tomorrow. But I'll try. I'll try something tonight. But I have to deliver this painting. This guy right here. I'm going to deliver him to Johnny. We saw him Johnny. So we're going to... I'm going to deliver and hang out and probably bring back food and we're going to eat. So by the time I do that, it'll be about 9 o'clock at night by the time I get done doing all that. So if I do... If I do draw... If you're up... I don't know you... It's, it's earlier for you. I might do it. it. Depends if I need to sleep. Because I've been... Uh, my hours are weird. I work like 10 hours. I sleep 4 hours. Then I work at 10 hours. And then I... I've been doing that. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's what I've been doing the last... Since Friday. <laughs> so, like I said, I slept twice on Saturday. I woke up twice on Saturday. And, uh... I don't know. I'm wearing, making it work. I'm getting my stuff done. I'm trying to catch up, man. Like I said, every minute's precious. I gotta be doing something. But... I need to take a break. I'll probably be drawing stuff. I gotta finish up this this I got this cowboy here. I got a cowboy with, with I got a cowboy and supergirl and comet and super horse. It's pretty cool. But you guys are cool. And 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 thank you for letting me talk for an hour and twenty seven minutes. <laughs> but remember, wake up and do things that you like. Do things that make you happy. And my three rules are no fighting, no crying. And uh, be nice to each other. That's it. That's all you have to do. Because everyone knows love is the basis of everything. But if you love, you won't have to worry about stop crying, stop fighting. Be nice to each other. Because the key is love. Wake up and do things that make you happy. If things hurt you, stop doing that thing that hurts you. If the shoes are too tight on your feet, throw them away, get new shoes. It's my philosophy. Right? <laughs> if, eating, if eating certain foods give you heartburn, well, I don't know what to do about that. They sell, they sell heartburn and acid tablets. Load up before you get them, right? But you guys are awesome. And follow me when you see me. I'm all over the internet. You put my name in the internet, you'll find me. Support Patreon. Buy t-shirts from Threadless. I have books on my website for sale. I'm going to be painting stuff on Saturday. I'm going to, re I'm going to reveal <laughs> reveal things later this week. Maybe Thursday or Friday. And um, you guys are awesome. I like when you guys are here with me. Be nice to each other. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>